Hello everybody, it's me. Welcome back to the video. Now, in this video, I am going to be taking a sneaky peek at Crazy Day. I, I showed you this thing a while back and then I ended up thinking it was like completely fine, but I forgot some recent buffs in it getting Earthquake. I think it is going to be a bit better along with the addition of printing. Um, I think again, actually did printing come out first? I think it did. I don't really know what I'm talking about, but who knows? Maybe this thing will be very, very good. But before I actually get into the overview, there is something that I really, really want to talk about. And I'll leave a timestamp on screen now for whenever I'm actually getting into the showcase of this. But I wanted to go on a little bit of a rant. It shouldn't take me too long. But I feel like with the recent patch notes and possible changes for the future that are happening, from, from my standpoint of not knowing the future of what things could get, I don't like them. I mean... I, I want to give you my input on a lot of the changes, like Rotera is getting a 6 speed nerf, meaning now it's outsped by base 110s, which really, really sucks for it. Um, and it basically loses the one thing that made it super strong, which was its speed tier. I still think it would be completely fine, but being able to be outsped by Bun Swirl, um, like getting outsped by Bun Swirl, Zapoera, all the 110s, just really sucks and just generally makes it slightly worse i don't think rotera needs to change at all granted it is annoying but it's just really good it has a good typing and what it does is good i just i feel like some of the changes aren't in, in super well thought out i don't want to be rude but i feel like some of them can be reconsidered and a, a little update with fruit toad uh, apparently the hp nerf is being reverted and apparently wish is thinking about changing its its ability its hidden trait from sickly sweet into spell shield or taking away takeout for one i prefer the hp change <laughs> because if you take away takeout from fruit toad you it loses the one thing that actually makes it good which is its pivot Yes, you can say that it's magical defense lower is good, but did you ever see Froto? Unless it was at the meme choice before um, the addition of like printing and getting takeout. No, you didn't because it didn't exist. I just, I, I'm not, I, I don't know. I don't like these changes and I'm really hoping they're reconsidered. Again, I don't think that, I don't want to change anything that Wish has 100% set in stone. I'm just merely voicing my opinion and I just don't think these changes are going to be super healthy because just trying to nerf what is meta and trying to get everything to work will not always work. You know, Antenna Flight will always be somewhat of a niche pick specifically because of its typing, its stats. It's gotten so, so many buffs, but it's still not the greatest, but it is a lot better than what it was before. Um... And something like Rotera could just stay exactly how it is and it will always be meta. There's just going to be things that are better than usual. That doesn't mean they um, are justified for a nerf. I think um, with Rotera, a better change would be to lower its offensive stats. But then again, that would lead it to where um, only confidence is the ability to use on it. Um, but just a, a little... I don't know. I, I really feel like these balance changes aren't there i don't like them i i think they need to be thought a little bit more because just wanting to change what is good and what is used a lot and what seems broken in the future they could fall off because of new additions to the meta and then you'd have to go back and rebuff them you know i feel like there's just too there are too many balance changes in doodle world right now and i think it's best to add something in let it sit for like a week or something see what how people think of them and then uh, change it accordingly i like that wish did that with infernius he gave it its time in the spotlight and he changed it he changed how it worked and he's changing its ability and it's losing some moves which makes it a little bit more balanced um again i can get on the topic of how infernius um does make Koryu and Fruitoad incredibly strong and that is the reason they're getting nerfed is because of Infernius not because of how busted they are themselves but because of Infernius you know but I don't know there might be a lot more things that are that are going into it like the future moves that they'll get move manuals awakenings maybe there's stuff in the future that is happening that I that we don't know about of course I'm just going off of what I see and from what I see I I think these need to be rethought or just don't do as many balance changes as you do now 
because constantly changing the game never gives the meta an effective time to set because um, it takes a long time for a meta to reset. Really People can find new tech, new really fun things, and if those get nerfed like instantly, it can't develop. I, I just wanted to go on a little bit of a rant. I know this is not what I usually do, but I'm just it's not sitting well with me and i really really wanted to talk about it and i just think that this is nice to get off my chest the gist of it is let the meta settle and let um i just think think more about don't try to change the meta stuff like don't don't i, I don't think this uh Grotera nerf is justified i think the best way to nerf it would be to lower its offensive stats and make confidence the best ability because uh, uh, It's fast. It has pivot. I don't know, but that's just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. But anyway Let's hop straight into it now here. I'm going with Krajil day today I'm going to be using a, a hidden trait one actually last time. I think I used that this uh, like ferocity i think it's like moxie so you get a plus one speed boot or a plus one attack boost every time you get a ko uh right here i have a trait bandit 50 percent increased defense stat when they are below 50 percent health which makes it so you can survive a lot more hits and makes yourself pretty bulky and hard to take down at 50 percent health and, and i have the use crayons as well just so i can live a few more hits and then I, we also have the earth and melee typing now with our moves here i have toughened days earthquake and swift hook now, what I like about this is we don't actually have any coverage moves, which can make us struggle against things like air types and generally some stuff like that. But I don't think the coverage moves that has access to I'm generally wanting to use. Like, I think this is completely fine to bring. Like, you have the access to Earthquake, which is such a brutally powerful move. It is good. And you can also have Swift Hook, which can take down some annoying threats that you want to be able to kill then you also have daze which is a nice uh stab option you can also go with reckless charge because we are using crayons but i think daze is a bit better because you have that confusion chance which could be helpful then we have toughen which allows us to toughen to boost uh, attack and defense which then again you could even replace daze for solid charge you get a little less base damage only by four but in the end you'd be able to do a little bit extra i think we'll do relatively the same so I guess if you wanted to, you could use Solid Charge. And if it pairs well with the Bandit status, then maybe? Solid Charge is actually sounding a bit better, so hold on. I think this does look a little bit better. Just kind of looking at it, this looks slightly better. So yeah. But yeah, this is good. This is a pretty solid move set. And then we have our we have Swordring Hood, Orient Necklace, Pizza Slice. Generally just trying to these are just my go-to equipments for a melee attacker that's also trying to live a few hits. And honestly, yeah, this thing's gonna do pretty, pretty well. Hopefully you guys are excited. And let's hop in to the first battle. So I don't have to deal with I don't I have to deal with not one, but two the noxuses. Two, two. I don't freaking care. Let's see if they lead off. What would they lead off with? They have no. They have one pivoter being Gruffling, which means it would awaken, which means then if I do this, I get a tsunami off. You get magical defense, but that still does half. Which then means I'd be in determination, which means they go into this, which means they swift hook, which then I can go into this, which then they poison punch, which means they can go into this, and then I can toughen, which then after that, their options to deal with me are limited. They only have party bug, which after that, I would need to switch into grotto. So let's try that. Okay. So here they are going to either hit and run or take out, or they just switch in general and straight into party bug. Then after that, I get to uh, tsunami into an atomophobia, which is good. Are you real? Yes. Uh, yes. It. Say yes. It. It's a good word. Yeah. So they do this, and I out, I outspeed, and then I get to tsunami. Then after this, they would go into um. They would go into Xenoxious for Swift Hook, I think. Yes, they go into one of the two Xenoxuses, which means then if they Swift Hook, I go into this, which then I get to go into this after on Poison Punch, which gets me an Earthquake, which they have one switch to do, that's Gruffling, which means after that I can go back and Bolt Tattoo if they go, want to go for Hit and Run. Yes. So then I get to go into Bolt Tattoo. Mm -hmm. We also reveal if this is a Hidden Trait, which it is. Then I go Krajilde. Go for Poison Punch. 
And I get poisoned instantly. Shoot, that really sucks, honestly. Now they can see I want to go for a ground move. Um, <clears throat> but what if I just click solid? Like, if I click solid, no, then they have Grufflin, right? I mean, if I click this and they go back into this, they're either going to take out or hit and run. Ooh, okay, okay. That's very good for me. We just take out one of the Xenoxuses. <clears throat> okay. Now, we also have Swift Hook, which is going into Desdog, which is really strong. And from there, that's pretty much our only use. We might live one other Xenoxus hit, though I severely doubt it. Um, okay. We get a defense boost, which means we go into full tattoo. Yes, okay. So I think in the end, that worked out fine. Um, it all went according in my head. It all went very well in my head. They didn't click takeout, surprisingly. Even though takeout was the better move there. Okay, so it means now they go Xenoxus. Their second one. Oh no, they actually go into that, which is interesting. So now it's hit and run, which does about to where your male symbol, which means then I get to go into Grotto. On uh, Dakota Cold, maybe. A little further than the male symbol. Dakota Cold as I resist. And then I get a Pearl Stitch, which is incredibly strong going into his team. <laughs> do, 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 do. All right. Psycho Force does negative damage, which means then they go into Xenoxious. Hmm. Slightly worried about the possibility of Xenoxious coming in. Slightly worried. I think right now, actually, Meltemaw just wins the game. Yeah, it sucks. Wait, I still have his? Oh no, he printed me one. This is my friend's, and I was like, wait, what? Uh... Okay. Do we need that anymore? Not really, so we'll sack it off. We don't need this anymore. We'll go Chris Jilde and see if I could possibly live one hit. Ooh, your guts, I see. And you're paralyzed. Do, 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 do. Choo! Let's go. Okay, they're gonna swift hook if they're smart. Yeah, okay. Which means I definitely can't outspeed it. But. No, he'd have to have like 100 and what? 58 speed? Uh, it's just Earthquake. Let's go! Ah, let's go. That's awesome. I'm kind of hoping for Desdog to come in. I'm kind of hoping for Desdog. Staligant. That is a very fun Swift Hook. They do have the option of clicking that Mind Move, though, which then we can go into Libel. After that, Libel's actually a victory. So yeah, we do. So we go with Libel and we win. Because it kills, kills, and kills. It should after the Swift Hook. We should do a lot to it. Nice. Okay, now we win. Now that's game. I think Springling could also win the game as well. So does Meltemaw. So we have a lot of win conditions here. I think Libel's the mo worst one because I get to see as a 1 HP Libelago sweep this whole team. Libelago is so strong. I, it's so, so strong. It pairs, it's so easily slottable on any team. I, I just think it's very, very good. It, it's it not hard to beat either. It's just strong. Okay, so they, they end up losing their Grufflin, which is beautiful. Which means then they go into Dead's Dog, which then I end Tomophobia, which after, I think they actually live in Tomophobia, which means they go into Springling, which then I get to kill the Staligant. And then if I don't kill Staligant, I have fast food. So no, I, I, I have every right to win this game. There's no reason they should win. Desdog lives, I think, one in Tomophobia. Which means, realistically, then I could have hit and ran, go grow to Grotto, sack it, then go back into this. Oh no, he, he actually does die. GG. I can't even say GG. It is a Crazy Day showcase, though. It do be a Crazy Day showcase. It do be. Do 
and we take down the Staligant. GG. GG. Definitely coming in clutch with Crajolde there, being able to take down both of the Xenoxuses, as well as being able to get some, like, okay damage off on the Staligant, which was very helpful in the end. GG. Okay, so this is going to be a bit more of an interesting one, because this team is very bulky, but only needs to lose their Rotera, and we can very easily win the game. So we always go with this lead. Actually, Thornet could come in, which means I, they hit and run, and then I can't. I set up B-Summon, and they have Shifting on Road, and then I'm just in a bad spot. No, they wouldn't do that. They didn't Jet Strike first, so then I have to go into this. So if they end up going Thornet, I think I... Hmm... Meltemaw is pretty good into his team. I would need to click uh, Devour a lot, though. Just go with the Belago and hope it's a Rotera lead. Yeah, it's a Thornet. It is expected, but... I, my best lead against this is probably just Meltemaw. Um... I think I just B-Summon for this whole game. I think having B-Summon up is good. It could also be Disposed or Sablet, or even Disposed Mel Metacrow. Or even Shifting Winds Metacrow. I don't really know until we get there. He's going to hit and run himself, or Thorny's Whack. Either one works. So hit and run into Abyss, it makes sense. Which means that then I get to go to Voltatu, which then I hit and run. If they're going Kadiri, that means they're Quick Ice, right? That would 100% mean they're Quick Ice if they go Kadiri. Okay, oddly enough, they picked the odd option of Quick Ice. That's an interesting option. I won't lie. Uh, we can awaken. Actually, no. If we, they get go Thornet for free. They know they can take a lot of damage here, so they wouldn't try anything. They just go Thornet, which means then I can go Melty. Okay. Hmm. I really would have not expected that because I have the option of Hydraulic Crash. So this is definitely an intriguing switch for me. Um, I definitely think this is completely fine to go into, which I don't really know what we're going to be able to do against this. It's a solid charge, which does do very, very little, which means then I can hit and run, go Krajilde, which then sets up a tough, which means they can go Rotera. I just need to kill the Rotera, and we're looking really, really good, and I can do that easily with Zapdos. I just need to be able to get enough chip on the Rotera eventually. So, yes, I always go Krajilde here. They probably click Cracking Static, assuming that I won't do anything. Because there's no way they... Oh, they could Belch as well. Ah, uh, Belch is coming out. I probably should have stayed in and just click Shock Therapy, but hey, whatever. Yeah, they're just going to Belch, and there it goes... Oh, they Shock Therapy. That's completely fine. Um, they know I want an Earthquake. I could also just Toughen. And then I get... A, I, think I, I think I just saw a charge, actually. Interestingly enough, they would have wanted to sack off their Sablet. That did a lot more damage than I thought it was going to do. Do I kill it? I do kill it. So that's nice. I don't actually kill it. Dang. Okay, so we actually... There was not a whole lot we could have done with Chris Day this game. There really wasn't a whole lot. Once we get rid of this, though, I do think our Meltemaw is pretty good with Heat Bash. We'll just Swift Token and see if it possibly kills, but I severely doubt it. Oh, nice. Oh, 33 on that. Oh, so we can actually save Krajilde. That's pretty nice. We save this. So we go into... This? Yes, this is fine. We need to save Meltema to deal with Thornet or else we lose. We go for Icy Bite, which freezes me, which now I can't heal. Um, he's parad, which means I can, I need to hit and run though. I need to hit and run. Because then I can just go Grotto if needed. I can just go Grotto if he has a, if it goes for Sablet. Okay. This works out pretty well because then I get to go Libelagua. Then he's threatened because he only has Kadiri. He's thinking Quick Ice, but then I go into Sapdo, which takes Chip from B-Summon and both. Zadros is worthless now because after I shock therapy, I just lose my health. So I, I go Libel. He's shock therapy, Earth Surge, Thunder, Striker, Solid Charge, or Crackling Static. One of those. We always click Tsunami here.
Dude, this damage he's getting on this is horrible. Right now, he has one switch into fire, which is his Rotera. Which then we just get to click a lot of nice moves. So yeah, we just always sack this off, I think. There's no reason not to. He can Icy Bite, and that's fine. Flashy Strike works too. It doesn't really matter because he gets chipped. And then we have Fast Food. Actually, no, we have Swift Hook, which there's no way this thing is above 159, 58 speed. So we always Swift Hook here, which then poses a threat to a few things. So we take this down with a Swift Hook. Okay. Which means their only good switch is Rotera, which I lost my best Rotera counter. So they can go into it pretty freely. Hmm. Yeah, I lost my best way to beat Rotera. That's what really what his goal was to take down the Voltatu, because it was annoying for him to deal with. Okay, Gujula gets two kills on Abyss and Answer Sablet. Yeah. That this makes sense for him to go into. Um, I think my best option. I don't need this anymore besides killing Kadiri, which I can do that. And I guess maybe hitting Metacro, but I can't do that. I can also thorn it with it. Um, at this point, I think I just, I could keep it maybe, but that depends what I want to go into. But I think I just sack it off while getting as much chip as I can. Uh, oh, he's Jet. He show he reveals his jet though, which is interesting. Ah shoot! Oh, this is gonna be annoying. Okay, clearly he's gonna click his hit and run. So let's just heal. Oh, this game's gonna get annoying. I could have gone into Melty. Uh, Thorny Thwack. Hmm. No, Libelagua just dies anyway because of that thing's Jet Strike. I would need Groto healthy, which means now I'd go Meltema. Which he has no switches into Meltema. He has nothing into Meltema. Which means he would have to, he'd be forced to Shatter. Which means I could go Spring and then I can Quick Strike. If it's a Ruby, I take half. I mean, here your literal only switch is either Metacro or Rotera. And if he goes Rotera, I get a Heat Bash off. Which means then he's forced to Shatter. Which then means... Oh, he actually stacks this. Okay. Now, um... Now Groto is insane. Now Groto is really strong with, a uh, Hydraulic Press. Or Hydraulic Crash. But I need Melt him off with Fast Food into Rotera. I, I need Groto alive in general, I think. Kadiri would kill. I need Grodo to deal with Kadiri. I need to deal with Rotera. And I need to deal with everything, pretty much. So let's just Heat Bash. We're gonna die either way. It's fine. Oh, crap. Wait. Now he's really low. Okay. We actually outsped him, so we know how he's slower than that. Because he goes into that. Okay. No. I don't think I can win now. I can't win now. I probably need to keep Meltem but I didn't know what I could do. My only switch into that was Groto, but if he shattered, I was dead. Yeah. Not much I can do. He had a lot of really good ways to stop me, and I lost Voltatu, which was what he was trying to, to deal with. Now he just gets to Goo Blast. And I miss. Yeah. There's actually a chance, because after that, he's he goes Rotera. Then I can heal and just keep healing until I stall everything. There was a good chance if I actually didn't uh, miss there, but I did. Unfortunate miss. Yeah. There was still actually a, an okay chance I could have won. But I had to miss, because I always miss when I need to hit a move. Unfortunate. Okay. Here we go into the next battle. I swear this person is familiar to me. They're very familiar to me. Um, 
Young. Okay, this is going to be an interesting game because we have a pretty solid lineup into his team. Um, our fire move is incredible. Like, our heat bash is so hard for him to stop. It's kind of crazy. And plus, we outspeed his entire team. Stacked by Vernal. Which means we could do this, which our max speed outspeeds his max speed. Unless he's magical. So we can easily click our tsunami here. No reason not to. Tsunami into probably maybe Fruto. Unless I had Tomophobia into the Fruto. Like, what if I did? That'd be crazy, right? Interestingly enough, he actually goes into Montour. Which means he's just gonna shock therapy into Voltatu. Actually, no, I can just go Visual Day. I really don't like staying in against things like Electro-types that have poss the possibility of priority, you know? Okay, so this he knows I want to click the ground move, but I mean I can just solid charge as well. Which means his only switch is going to be Moss. Or, these two work too, then I can toughen on that. Yeah, they go Moss. Uh, now Moss can be interesting to deal with because I don't really know how. I can go Grotto and just spam Pearl Stitch. I don't even need to awaken. Pearl Stitch is good into him. Okay. Yeah, now we Pearl Stitch. He has a bar barrier, which is interesting, so... Now I know that they're, they want to be annoying. I can just scapegoat on their switch. Yeah, I'll just scapegoat. And whatever they switch into, I can hit really hard. Or I can just heal. I probably just heal here. Which then means I can get Krajilde on the field. So I guess now I can just Pearl Stitch. I do miss, unfortunately. So my scapegoat does break. I think now I can go Krajilde. Krajilde, whatever you want to call it. I just call it Krajil, like Jill. I, I like the way I say it. take very 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 low damage we almost completely lost spectatic actually which is nice we need to get our b summon up though we really need to get our b summon up um let's go with the bell he goes for disarm so i'm just gonna get my b summon up i don't care at this point i'm just gonna be summon He goes for another disarm, which is very weird. Which means I can. And Tomophobia is my strongest move, but I can also just hit and run. Which reveals to me that he's Cursed Cloak. Which means he's gonna disarm again, maybe? Yeah, he just gets a spam disarm till I die. So my spikes are gone, but the spikes don't really matter because it doesn't do anything into him. What a shockwave. Just gonna do what I can to try to take this thing down. You can go Montour, which then can, on my hit and run, click shock therapy. Okay, interesting enough, I get my shockwave off, which is really nice. I will never get Thunderstrike purely because I think it's funny. Okay, we can hit and run, actually. Let me go Grotto. If it goes for its heal jelly. Um, yeah, we go Grotto. Gooblast should do low damage. Yep. And then we can Pearl Stitch. Which is strong into him. His only switch is Montour. Okay, he actually is shifting winds. One. Two. Three. Okay, nice. Let's just Pearl Stitch again. Goes for heal. 
One, two, three, four. I mean, I will gladly waste all of your heals. If you're down to do that, I'm down to do it. What speed are you? 88 against 79. So that probably does outspeed. So I'm willing. If you want to waste all your heals, I'm willing to have one pearl stitch left. I'm willing. Waste all your heals for whatever I care. Unless I miss, which can totally happen. He's trying to bait out the Awakened. That's what he's trying to do. He has used three heals. Okay, he's Google. Oh, I bet he thought I was going to Awaken there just for damage. I do miss, unfortunately, so I don't actually get to kill the Metacrow, which I really did want to do. Goes into Montour. Okay. Which definitely gonna click a very powerful move into me. Um, I mean, the electric move is obviously gonna come out. What if I just hydraulic? Oh, sick. Okay. I don't really know why that switch was going through your mind. Was he assuming Krajilde or something? That would have made sense, but. And maybe he's going for burn, maybe? Maybe that's what his plan was. Um, Pearl Stitch. One. Okay. Disarm won't do anything because I have my rune. I, I'm not going to awaken because then I'm weak to Moss and Medi. Um, Hero Hydraulic. I don't need to awaken. That's the thing. Awakening this game would be a throw because then I'm weak. We I'm, I'm weak, 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 weak. So it's just I'm getting more value out of not awakening. Now I'll just heal a bit. You're still cut. And then I heal one more time. And then I can go... I could go Krajilde. But then they have the Moss. Okay. Then I Hydraulic Crash. Just to kill it. I want to save some of my Pearl Stitches. I had to use a lot of them. Because he was scared to bring the Montor in. You know, he was very scared of that. Hmm, <laughs> Okay, so now you would click your Thunder Strike here, which now Meltama is insanely good into him. It's still super strong. So next turn I can kill this thing. Mineral Cannon comes out, which is weaker than Thunder Strike, so that's good for me that he went for it. So then I can Hydraulic one more time. Then if they go Medi, I think I Awaken then. And then just go for my Hydraulic at that point. I Awaken if they go Medi and Hydraulic because it's the strongest move I can possibly click. If they go Moss, I can heal one more time and then I Awaken to Pearl Stitch and die, I think. Yeah, you, you should not always Awaken your things. You need to look at why I didn't Awaken this game. Okay, so now what I do is, for one, I heal. Actually, I could Pearl Stitch, then Awaken. Yes, I Pearl Stitch, then I Awaken, because then I don't die to the Vine Grasp. Go for Vine Grasp. Yeah, I, yeah, 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 cool, 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 Pearl Stitch! Now, unfortunately, Pearl Stitch has been nerfed, where now it could be 60 to 120. Aww, I forgot they had that move. Okay. 
Bar Barrier Moss. The realest moss of all time. Yeah, hi. I mean, I think I still want to be safe against a few things. I can just Entomophobia, though. If they go through Toad, I hit and run. Okay, Entomophobia. Perfect the fact that it lives. Incredible that it lives. Which means I can see. Okay, there's the Vine Grass. Which then means Springling is just free, which now Springling wins. I want to see if Day could live one hit for Moss and I solid. Let's see if that can happen. Let's see, let's see. I'm curious. Can, can Day win this game? Because he's still provoked, which means if I can live one move that he has, like toughen here. Oh, he outspeeds. No. Okay, and then if I click Rust, then Experiment Over, I go Springling and win. I mean, Springling's just an instant win button, but I just want to see if I can possibly win Krajilde here. I don't think I can, but it's just something that I'm very curious about. Can I do that? Go solid charge. Rust. Yeah, now they see that Rust is the better move, and I'm still freaking alive. Okay. Which means my solid charge, in theory, should be a lot stronger than I think it is. Right? I think it's a lot stronger. The Chill Frog, which... I think this thing's actually relatively quick, so it probably outspeeds me. Uh... Yeah, there's no way about speeding unless it's a really, really slow pivot. Let me just solid charge. Take out. I actually live. Oh, I thought I lived. When I'm below 50%, I get 50% increased melee defense, and I'm at plus one. I mean, I guess I'm like at one HP, so it doesn't really matter. But I was just curious if I could. You know, I'm at plus one. I don't know. Maybe like I'm. Maybe I'm dumb. Banded Meltema coming in. But yeah, with that, I think that's gonna end it off. That shall end it off. GG. I mean, I'm not gonna one shot this, but I get to kill it with Springling. All for the content. I don't really get what he was thinking about with the white Viral. I'm honestly kind of curious. I think Rust is better on that instead of going for Capsize. The reason is, is, you, is if you fight uh, like the Seams or something, you can hit with a Rust and then take out instead of the weaker Capsize. Plus your offensive stats are generally the exact, are generally around the same. G. Good game. Good, 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 good game. Well, that was a good game. GG. Good game. But I think with that, we're going to end off this video. Hope the guys did enjoy. And if you did, leave a like and subscribe down below. It is very helpful. Now, I think Rajil Day is still fine. I think it definitely lacks something. It's probably a lot better in like lower tiers. It'd be cool if there were an act if there was an actual tiering system of this game. But I don't think that'll ever be happening. M maybe at some point in the future they can be gener maybe that's what we should do with the usage stats that were recently exposed or shown to people. But yeah, hopefully that you guys enjoyed, and those of you who stuck around for my little rant all the way to the end of the video, you're a trooper, and I applaud you. Thank you. But hopefully you all enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!